Home labs are a great way to learn, to advance your skill set, to become familiar with technologies that you have not yet worked with. And setting goals in your home lab is a great way to achieve those milestones of learning, of getting familiar with different technologies. In this video, I want to discuss with you guys my home lab goals as we go through 2023. So I hope this is going to be a fun discussion for you guys, and hopefully it'll prompt further discussions about home labs, what you guys are doing, what technologies you want to learn this year, and what changes you're going to make with your home lab. So stick around, let's dive into Home Lab 2023 edition. This year, one of my goals in 2023 is to refresh my VMware vSAN cluster. Currently, I am running on fairly dated Supermicro servers that I have had for the past five, six, maybe going on even seven years now. So I have slowly added to the collection of Supermicro servers that I am using in the home lab to host my services. And the vSAN cluster is the oldest of the servers that I have hosting applications in the lab. So this year, one of the things I'm going to be doing is specking out replacements for my home lab hardware. Will I stick with Supermicro? Even though I like Supermicro, there are a lot of other great server vendors out there that I especially like and that I work with in production environments. What recommendations are you guys making for home lab hardware refreshes as of 2023? What sweet spot have you noticed as far as compute, memory, network, storage that also could perhaps balance out with power efficiency? I'm curious to know what you guys' plans are. And please do subscribe to the channel as you will see updates to the hardware as far as what servers I am introducing into the home lab environment and which direction I go. And as of yet, I still have not settled on that decision. I recently upgraded my firewall to a Palo Alto PA440 and I couldn't be happier. This thing is really great. It's a nice unit, very powerful, very capable. It allows me to do a lot of the advanced security that I want to do to protect not only my home lab, but my home network. That was a recent hardware upgrade that I made just a couple of months ago. Also thinking along the lines of a new server cluster, I am currently running 10 gig networking in the server stack. 25 gig is looking very appealing when it comes to uh, new servers, new network capabilities, and network requirements of technology such as the new VMware vSAN express storage architecture that requires 25 gig. However, there are many other virtualization solutions out there that can also benefit from 25 gig and higher network throughput. So that's also a hardware consideration that I am going to be making in the home lab this year. What kind of network gear am I going to introduce? And I toss that back to you guys for comment purposes and for community discussion. Is there a particular particular switch that you guys have an eye on this year as far as your home lab networking. Are you currently at 10 gig and going to 25? Are you currently at 1 gig going to 10 gig networking? Also, I posted a video just a couple of months ago as well about cleaning up and rearranging my network and server rack, which I posted a video on the before and after of that particular project. And that's still a bit in flight as I arranged everything like I want. I cabled everything. However, there is still a lot of uh, cable management that I want to do and to introduce in the server rack just to make things look more nice. Well, the second exciting area in a home lab environment is certainly the software. And I have a lot of great goals when it comes to software that I want to play around with, introduce into the home lab, and just have fun with. There are many free and open source software solutions that I see out there that really intrigue me. This year, one of the things I want to do is to expand the variety of Linux servers that I'm using in the home lab. and find new ways to integrate Linux into the home lab. And I have rolled out many, many Linux environments in 2022, and I look to uh, continue that trend. I'm also running, of course, many Windows servers. 
uh, to play around with different technologies, running a Active Directory domain controllers and other Microsoft technologies. But also I want to find ways to continue working with Linux and replace many of my other services that I may have housed on Windows servers with Linux technologies. And I also would like to branch out from simply using Ubuntu server, which I love Ubuntu server serving me well, but there are other Linux distros out there that I would like to play around with more in the home lab. So I'm looking at ways to, to do that. In addition to those things I've mentioned, there are many free and open source monitoring solutions that I have feel like I've just scratched the surface on observability and monitoring in the home lab, especially when it comes to containerized workloads and Kubernetes and uh, all of those modern applications. I want to dive more deeply into working with those types of technologies in the home lab. So that, that really excites me. As you guys know, I posted a video a couple of months ago about free and open source monitoring solution for servers. And it's definitely a subject that many are interested in. And I want to uh, take a look at more solutions that you guys have suggested bring into the home lab and play around with that. I want to share my findings uh, with you guys on that front. Number three is the technologies and solutions that I want to bring into my home lab. I want to continue my journey into Kubernetes and Kubernetes containerized modern applications and continue that path as I am really enjoying this journey of modernization of my home lab, moving from those fat virtual machines into containerized applications, which is the trend. That for me is one of the areas that I am going to continue, but I also would like to play around with uh, HashiCorp Nomad. Nomad is actually gaining a lot of traction and it's something that I want to take more time and play around with in my home lab environment. Let me know in the comments if you guys are already running Nomad in your home lab, what your thoughts are, how you compare it with Kubernetes, and I am going to do the same in the upcoming months. Finally, what would I like to do differently in the home lab? And this was one I had to think about just a little bit differently, looking at what I did in 2022 and before and looking at where I am today at the beginning of 2023 and where I would like to be in the home lab uh, by the end of this year. And of course, for me, my journey is continuing along the, the path of microservices, containerization, looking at modern uh, solutions like Kubernetes in my home lab environment. And I want to share some of this journey with you guys how I am taking applications that are running in full virtual machines, how I'm migrating that data uh, to containers, and then finalizing that journey and bringing those containers into a Kubernetes cluster. So that is the path that I am taking in the home lab currently. In addition to that, one of the goals that I have as far as what do I want to do differently is I want to automate more of the processes in the home lab. I think automation is awesome using technologies like Terraform, Ansible, and many other scripting tools that you can use to fully automate your environments. And I'm already using Terraform to deploy virtual machines, using Ansible for configuration management. So I would like to continue doing that in the home lab to an even greater degree and see what else I can automate and make sure that I have all of my environment captured in code, committed to a Git repository, and automated in some form or fashion. Also, I am very interested to look at, for me personally in my home lab and for my learning purposes, integrating more cloud technologies into the home lab. There are many great hybrid solutions that you can use for free or use for a limited period of time, play around with in your home lab. So I'm looking at using some of those hybrid technologies, seeing how I can leverage cloud a bit more in my lab environment, as this really does mirror what many organizations are doing and the challenges that they are having to work through. We find a lot of that with our lab environments. What are some hosted services perhaps that we can use uh, in the cloud in a cost effective way while using and leveraging all of our awesome home lab technologies and resources that we have available to us? Well, guys, I, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. It's just kind of me giving my thoughts of where things are for me personally in my home lab environment, where I see my lab going 
in 2023 what my goals are from hardware, software, technologies and solutions as well as what I would like to do differently in the home lab this year. Well as always please do like and subscribe to the channel. By doing that you're going to see much of this that I'm going to document this year with the home lab and hopefully this will be helpful to you guys and we can bounce ideas off of one another in the comments and I would love to know what you guys are doing, what challenges you're overcoming in your home labs, technologies, what hardware, all of those things. Really awesome awesome stuff. Well guys, I'm Brandon Lee. Please once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys very soon.